I'm going to show you how to subtract when you are dealing with mixed numbers. So I'm going to start off with 5 and 2 thirds. And I'm going to subtract 1 and 3 6. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm dealing with things that are the same size. And I notice that I need to change these fractions to have the same denominator so that we're dealing with the same size. So I know that 2 thirds could be written as an equivalent fraction or worth something in sixths because I recognize my math facts. So I know that 3 times 2 is going to be 6, and 2 times 2 is going to be 4. So I could rewrite my 2 thirds as 4 sixths. 5 and 4 sixths minus 1 and 3 sixths. So now I can subtract, and I could start with my whole numbers, or I could start with my part. So I'm going to just go do with the whole numbers first. So 5 minus 1 is 4. And if I take away 3 6 from 4 6, I end up with 1 6. Now, this problem was kind of nice because I had enough 6 that I could just subtract. But what happens if you have a fraction you're subtracting and you don't have enough? Just like when we're subtracting whole numbers, sometimes we need to borrow. So let's say that we had 3 and 1 third minus two thirds. First thing again, I want to check and make sure I'm dealing with things that are the same size and they're both in thirds. So I could start to subtract, but I can't take two away from one yet. I need to borrow from this whole amount here. So I'm going to pull out one so that this three is going to become two. I'm going to take the one that I pulled up from there and I'm going to rewrite it in thirds. And I know that if I had a full, whole amount, and they're chopped into three, I would have three thirds. And since I have this extra one here, this is going to become four thirds. I'm going to rewrite the rest of my problem, and now I can subtract. So I'm going to take two from four, which is going to leave me with two thirds, and then I still have two. So my answer's there.